Hey y'all, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about domain of rational functions. Domain for any function is referring to the independent variable or X, usually X. Um, it can be a different variable, but we usually call it X. And what it means is you're finding the allowed values, the possible values of X or the ind independent variable for that function. So in rational functions, there are going to be X values that have to be excluded from the domain. And I'll show you why in just a little bit, but that's kind of why we're specifically talking about domain today. Domain is the, if you were to put it into simple terms, this is not the exact definition, but it is the allowed, the X values that are allowed for the function basically. I wrote that as all possible X values for the function. You can put that in your own words uh, if you want to, but that's just how I described it. And then in functions like rational functions, there are values that make the function undefined. So that's the term that we use there when I said that we have to exclude some X values those X values make the function undefined. So let's talk about undefined in a simpler, um, easier scenario. Uh, rational functions are like rational numbers. They're just fractions, but rational functions have variables in them and fractions are just numbers. So let's look at some fractions, which are rational numbers. And let's talk about division for a second. So if I were to simplify this fraction, six divided by two, we know that six divided by two is three because two times three is six. Two times three is six. That's a simple fact. That's an easy scenario where we know that that's true. If I break six up into groups of two, there's three groups of two. Now, if I have another one, six divided by zero, and I'm looking for what I can multiply zero by to make six, zero times six is zero, zero times zero is zero, zero times one is zero, two is zero, all the, all the numbers. So basically there's nothing that I can multiply zero by to get six. So when we have zero in the denominator, we have this issue where there's not a number that exists to make this a true statement. And we call this undefined. So this applies for rational functions also that if you have zero in the denominator, you have an issue there because it doesn't create a unique number and we're not gonna be able to find one. So we'd call it undefined. So I wrote there in that little blank, um, just nothing exists there. You don't wanna put zero, cause zero is a number. So you don't, that would indicate something else. So I just put, you can put DNE does not exist or nothing exists or whatever for your notes will be fine. The same rules apply to rational functions where the denominator equals zero that is where the function is what we know now undefined. So when you're thinking of domain, we're focusing on the denominator, denominator, domain. And I mean, for the rest of, the function, you definitely have to focus on the numerator and the whole function, you know, while you're analyzing the function. But if you're just talking about domain, you're just looking at the denominator. So I have a couple examples down here. We are finding the domain of each. Domain is the set of all possible X values. So we're trying to list the X values that produce Y values, which means that I need to figure out where this function is undefined because at those places, that's where there's not gonna be Y values produced. 
So for example, if I plug in a one right here, one over one plus two is a third. So when I plug in one for X, I get a Y value of one third. If I plug in zero, I would get one half. If I plug in two, I would get one fourth. All of those number produce Y values. So I need to figure out where it's not going to produce Y values, which means I need to figure out what makes this denominator zero. So I need to say, I want to know where X plus two is zero because at that value, I'm gonna have an undefined function. So I found that at negative two, if I plug in negative two for X, I will not be able to produce a unique Y value. So I can confirm that one over negative two plus two is one over zero. And that zero in the denominator creates an undefined function. So uh, the domain for this, you could say that I've seen several ways to explain this. Um, you could say that uh, the excluded value is two, uh, sorry, negative two. So some people will say, you know, X cannot equal negative two, which indicates that X can equal anything other than negative two. But I'm going to write this in interval notation because that's typically how we talk about domain in algebra. We're gonna use that interval notation or you can use inequalities, but I'm gonna go with interval notation. To do that, I'm gonna draw, kind of run out of room, but I'm gonna draw a little number line here just to kind of give you an idea as to what this looks like. And I have a critical value at negative two. So I'm just gonna put that on the number line. You can put more numbers if you want to, but this is just to kind of visualize what's going on. X cannot equal negative two. So I have this discontinuity here. I'm just gonna put a dotted line there for now at negative two, but X can equal all the other numbers. All the other numbers are okay. The only excluded value is negative two. So this means that my domain lives in these two intervals separated by that value, that excluded value that it can't be. So this goes into negative infinity, this goes into positive infinity, and then I have that critical value at negative two where we have a problem. So to set up your intervals, this interval goes from, start with the smaller end, negative infinity, it goes up to negative two, it cannot equal negative two, so I have a parentheses there. And then I have a break in the graph, so I'm gonna use the union symbol and then it goes from negative two cannot equal negative two all the way to infinity and it stops there. We can't equal infinity either, so I'm gonna put a parentheses there also. So this symbolism here is showing me that my graph can go all the way up really, 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 really close to negative two. I just can't equal negative two. So that's why I have that union there and then the parentheses on negative two because I'm showing that I've got a skip in the graph here. So if I pull up a calculator, I can show you this just to kind of give you a, another visual. Uh, got a lot going on here. There we go. One over X plus two. I put X plus two in parentheses because it's all in the denominator. I'm gonna show you the table first. If I scroll up here to negative two, my calculator says N-A-N. -N. Yours might say error that indicates discontinuity. Because you can see the Y values, all the other Y values are there. There's a Y value that exists, but at negative two, there's a problem. So if I look at the graph here, you can see why I used a dotted line probably. It's pretty universal. That I have graph, it's kind of a weird graph, but it's like a curve that's going down there in the bottom left corner. And then there's a curve in the top right corner. And there's that discontinuity there at negative two in the middle. So that curve that goes up to negative two, it can, it kind of uses negative two as a border. The graph is cruising along and then it hits that negative two and it goes whoop, and it falls down the cliff, I guess. And then on the other side, same thing, it's kind of cruising along and then it hits that negative two and it, and it uses it as like a bumper, kind of a border there where 
it guides the graph. It can't ever equal negative two, but it can get very, very close to negative two. So that's what that looks like. That's what a rational function looks like. And this one specifically has discontinuity at negative two. So my interval is showing that I have all graph from this interval, and then there's a skip, and then this interval. And that's that's all you have to do for domain. So this domain would be negative infinity to negative two union, negative two to infinity. That's all. So for the next one, in the denominator, if I were to set the denominator equal to zero, I have a quadratic, so it's not as straightforward to solve, but we do know how to solve quadratics because we've done that before. You can solve quadratics by factoring, quadratic formula, completing the square. There's lots of different methods. So you just pick the method of your choice and go ahead and solve it. So this will be a little bit of a review on quadratics, but also new with domain. So I want you to pause it, try and come back. This one was easily factored. So this is a factorable quadratic. If you use the quadratic formula, that's totally fine. You should still end up with negative six and four. So the factors of negative 24 that added to two were positive six, negative four, split them up, solve, you get your excluded values. So I've excluded values at negative six and positive four. So if I just draw that really quickly to set up my intervals, I have excluded values at negative six and four. So I'm gonna put little dotted lines there to show that there's a break in the graph. That's gonna set up three different intervals. You can see that here, there's an interval here, here, and here. So the two excluded values broke is going to break up the graph into three different sections, basically. And this is negative infinity, and this is positive infinity. So my domain goes from negative infinity to negative six, breaking the graph union, negative six to four, breaking the graph union, four to infinity. Sorry, I ran out of room there. Um, it's a little hard to see. Sorry about that. That's a four. Uh, so that one's kind of a longer one because we have two excluded values that breaks it up into three sections. So we have three intervals separated by unions. The unions are lining up with those excluded values kind of mine's a little bit off but that is your domain that's all you have to do so last one here last example three over x squared minus four pause it try it try the whole thing pause it try it come back for this one you can solve by factoring or the square root property um, quadratic formula either way you should end up with positive and negative two i have two answers because it is x squared so my excluded values are at negative two and two, which sets up two um, basically boundaries in the graph. And you end up with three intervals. It goes from negative infinity to negative two, union, negative two to two, union, two to infinity. So you have to make sure and have those three intervals. And I can show you, I meant to show you the last one, but I'll show you this one, uh, how that looks on a graph just to kind of Get that visual, three over x squared minus four. Uh-oh. Oh, man, I'm just messing this up. Insert, I forgot my over um, division. There we go. Okay, now that works. I'm going to go to the table, and we can see that at negative two, there's that error, and at positive two, there's that error. Um, the reason why I'm showing you this by hand is because sometimes those errors are at fractions and those fractions aren't going to show up in your table unless you change the increments. But um, I wouldn't always just rely on the table to find those places, but it definitely is a good way to kind of check your answer if you have already found them. And then the graph, let's zoom out here, you can see those three separate parts. So on the left top corner, we have that graph that uh, goes up, borders that asymptote. Oh, I was ruined it, spoiled it. Asymptote was what I was going to say. I wasn't cussing. Um, <laughs> it's called an asymptote, which is what I'm getting to next, but I didn't want to spoil it. Uh, sorry. 
Uh, it borders that excluded value negative two, and then we have graph in the middle between negative two and positive two, and then graph on the right side after two. So that brings me to the next part. It is not a cuss word. I just stopped in the middle. It kind of sounded like a cuss word. Sorry about that. Um, these x values in the domain that make the function undefined create discontinuity in the graph, and we call those vertical asymptotes. So um, that is spelled really funny. It is A S Y M P T O T E, asymptote. So it's a really weird word, and it's also spelled really weird. Uh, but that is that I usually will abbreviate as VA, vertical asymptote, but um, that's how you pronounce that. So we've already really done all the hard work for domain. And then the vertical asymptotes are just based on the domain. So for the first example, we had um, basically X cannot equal negative two. And I showed you the graph there. It had that dotted line at negative two. That dotted line is called a vertical asymptote. And the equation of that line is X equals negative two. That's all. That's an equation of a vertical line. A horizontal line is Y equals whatever. A vertical line is X equals whatever. So in the second one, our excluded values were at negative six and four. So I have vertical asymptotes at X equals negative six and X equals four. That's all. It's that simple. And then the last example, I had excluded values at negative two and two. So I have vertical asymptotes at X equals negative two and X equals positive two. And those create, now in the, in the calculator graph, it showed dotted lines. Um, they're actually technically imaginary lines. It's just when you're drawing a graph, you kind of, you use it as a guide. So some calculators will show it, some calculators will not. Some calculators will show it as a solid line, depending if you have an older calculator. Uh, this one is an app, so it showed it as a dotted line, which I really like. And then if you're drawing it yourself on paper, you would do a dotted line to show that it's a vertical asymptote. But technically speaking, it's invisible and it actually wouldn't show up at all. You would just see that that graph goes down and this graph goes up. And it, anyway, um, so that's how that would look. Anyway, that is all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help and I will see you in the next one.